Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Prince Pipes and Fittings Q1 FY22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by HDFC Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star. Ten zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Radesh Ravi from HDFC Securities Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, hi, thank you, Malika. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of HDFC Securities, we welcome you to the Q1 FY22 Earnings Con Call of Prince Pipes and Fittings. From the management team, we have. Mr. Parag Chera, Joint MD; Mr. Shyam Sharda, Chief Financial Officer; Mr. Anand Gupta, Deputy Chief Financial Officer; and Mr. Nihar and Mr. Nihar Chera, Vice President Strategy. In this call, I now hand over the call to Mr. Parag Chera for his opening remarks. Post which, the moderator will the moderator will open the floor for Q and A. Over to you, Parag Sir. Yeah, thank you, Rajesh, and a very good morning to all. Thank you for joining us for our quarter one FY22 earnings call. Hope you and your families are safe and well. The presentation and the press release have been issued to the stock exchanges and uploaded on our website. I will be keeping my opening remarks in brief so that we can have more time for Q&A. In quarter one, we had a revenue growth of nine percent and a volume degrowth of twenty-six percent. Operating margins stood at approximately twelve point five percent. Our results were impacted due to three reasons. Firstly, as we had indicated during the last quarter's call, we took a strategic decision in March. that we wanted to have a high product availability in the market due to the uncertainty of a potential lockdown also with the anticipated decline in pvc prices we kept our capacities running high to produce and sell to align with the above goal hence in april the channel inventory was relatively high secondly due to the restriction of the second wave both the urban as well as the rural markets were impacted lastly agri demand was muted however the plumbing and the swr segments continued to deliver also well supported by the strong inroads gained by prince flogard plus plumbing systems in the urban semi urban and tier 2 and 3 regions moving forward June performance had been better than May and July performance had been much better than June we are returning back to our regular growth trajectory we are moving in the right direction with strong business results the real estate sector has been reporting positive growth this augurs well for us signaling traction piping products <clears throat> as we progress sustainability of our growth momentum is our key focus alliances and profitable collaborations will continue to play an important role for us across all our operating categories aligning with our strategy of winning in many indias the ultra tech building solution and prince pipes synergy is well placed to be a mutually beneficial partnership especially for the semi urban and rural markets the ubs platform has a vast network of around 2000 dealers and prince can now leverage the relationship of registered dealers on the ubs platform this presence will further expand our brand visibility in our tier 2 and 3 cities and towns 
which are growing markets for our segment. Over the past few quarters, we have been highlighting how ESG is core to our overall strategy. In alignment with this, we announced the Ab Ghar Ghar Me Ganga campaign in Haridwar during the Mahakumbh. As a part of this, visitors were given miniature Prince Storefit water tanks containing holy Ganga water at special booths. We were able to provide a solution to citizens who could now take this holy water back home in a safe and hygienic manner, thus helping the government authorities to maintain the COVID guidelines. Furthermore, the miniature store fit water tanks signified a message urging people to save water. Through this campaign, we distributed more than 10,000 small tanks with holy Ganga water to family members of senior citizens who were unable to visit guards during the pandemic. Thank you for your time and mind share. I will now hand it over to Nihar to introduce to you our new product launch. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is a day I have been looking forward to for some time now. At Prince, we have been able to build a range of innovative products consistently catering to applications across the board. In a market like India, which has typically been late in the adoption curve of technology and products that are well accepted globally. Right from the 1980s, we were ahead of the curve by driving a shift from GI to PVC pipes for domestic use. In 2017, we were early movers in bringing a global product, double wall corrugated DWC pipes to replace RCC pipes for underground drainage. I strongly believe that this product will be able to change the face of our sanitation standards across India in the years to come. For us, the next such high performance product is one that will improve the user experience and impact yet another segment. I am excited to introduce Prince OneFit industrial CPVC pipe. We are confident that this product will replace the conventionally used product mild steel pipes for industrial application. OneFit will be licensed from Corzin with our global partner of choice, Lubrizol. This Corzin product of Lubrizol is the preferred industrial CPVC solution across the globe. Now that I have walked you through the high performance standards of Corzin, let me also walk you through the rationale of Prince entering into this segment and the potential opportunity. Firstly, the indus Indian industrial piping market size is expected to be around approximately 16,000 crores. This is today dominated by the conventional MS pipes. In India today, CPVC is majorly used only for the domestic application. Whereas globally, CPVC pipes are very well accepted for the industrial application as well. Thus, I believe there is a tremendous potential for industrial CPVC pipes in the Indian market. Secondly, the industrial CPVC segment is underpenetrated and has low competitive intensity. Hence, this product is an ideal complement to our existing product portfolio also, the pipe to fitting and valve ratio is favorable, making this a key value proposition. Lastly, this segment has high barriers to entry because of high gestation periods for orders and the required techno-commercial expertise. This results in relatively high barriers to entry. Prince OneFit will provide an optimum solution to industries such as chemical, power generation, metal treatment, paper and pulp, mineral processing, water treatment plants, among many others. Now, with this new product, Prince is India's first company to have a three polymer solution for the industrial application. 
easy fit in PVC pipes, green fit PPR pipes, and now one fit CPVC pipes. I strongly believe we are now in an opportune position to impact the industrial piping segment. Thank you all. I will now pass it on to Sham to walk you through the fiscal performance. Thank you, Nihar, and good morning, friends. I'll be taking you through the Q1 FY22 financials now. In this quarter, the company saw a robust revenue growth of 9% at rupees 331 crores compared to 302 crores in Q1 FY21. Volumes have reduced by 26% at approximately 18,500 metric ton. EBITDA was at around 41 crores in Q1 FY22 compared to rupees 32 crores in Q1 FY21, a growth of 30%. EBITDA margin was at around 12.5% in Q1 FY22 as compared to 10.5% in Q1 FI21, indicating a margin expansion of 200 bips. The profit after tax stood at rupees 18 crores compared to rupees 11 crores, translating to a growth of 58%. This was owing to an overall improvement in performance at EBITDA level, aided by a sharp decrease in finance costs by 60% due to the complete repayment of long-term debt and continuous improvement in cost of short-term borrowings. On the key balance sheet parameters for the quarter ended, we would like to state our gross debt as on 30th of June 2021 stood at 157 crores compared to a gross debt of 256 crores as on 30th of June 2020, thereby indicating a reduction of 99 crores from the previous year. We have repaid our long-term outstanding debt and have become long-term debt-free as on date. Our working capital will improve as markets open up and the inventories will normalize. It has been our priority, one, to reduce cost of borrowings, second, move records on channel financing facility. While we have been able to reduce the borrowing cost over the past six quarters, I am glad to share that we have achieved partial recourse terms on our channel financing facility. We are in the right direction towards achieving our dual goal of customer centricity and a stronger balance sheet. With this, we would like to open the floor for questions, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We would like to remind participants that you may press star one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Sujit Jain from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, I just wanted to uh, quickly check Nehar with you is uh, what is our, you can give that number for FI21. What is our sales mix in CPVC, PVC and others in agri, plumbing and infra? And uh, looking at the numbers for Q1 of competitors, have we lost some market share? Sure. So firstly, uh, in terms of the breakup, uh, you know, you are aware that we do not give up segmental uh, data uh, from a competitive intensity point of view, but roughly around uh, 65 odd percent is building material. 30-odd uh, percent is agri and 5-odd percent is infrastructure. Uh, secondly, uh, on your question of market share, no, we have not lost market share. Um, I think if you, it, it is not a fair thing just to look at year on year or QOQ because the bases are very different for different companies looking at the, you know, the, the kind of impact the two waves had in the past quarter one and the current quarter one. 
I think the only reason, uh, you know, there has been a, a significant volume degrowth is like we mentioned, the channel inventory <coughs> was very high. And if you look at the March quarter, we were actually the, you know, had a very strong volume growth relative to the industry. And again, if you, like we said, that if you look at the July numbers, I think we are back on our strong growth trajectory. Uh, so to answer your question, no, uh, we have not lost market share. Sure, but is it safe to understand that TTUC would be roughly 65-70%, PVC would be 15-20% and then the remaining others without yes. getting into numbers? PVC would be around 65-70%, CPVC would be around 18-20% and the yeah, balance I'm would sorry. be the other polymers. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, uh, I was just noticing uh, in your FY20 release, when the cash flow from operation got revised uh, from minus 152 crores to plus 102 crores. So if you can explain that. So I will take this. Actually, uh, what was done in March 20, uh, there was a uh, 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 point which was mentioned in operating activities against the financial activity, which got recouped in the subsequent quarter. So that was in discussion with the auditor itself. So there was a realignment being done. So the classification was suitably being made thereafter. So if you can explain further actually what went above the line of cash flow from operation when you declared FY20 results and then what got uh, recast in FY21 so, results when you restated FY20. So it was basically the fixed deposit part of the thing which was a part of the investing activity which uh, ideally you know should have formed a part of the investing activity is got club in the operating activity. So that got rightly classified at a later stage with the consent of the auditors. So it was mainly in FDs which was being, you know, which was being raised, the money that we raised from IPO which was parked in FDs. That classification got changed. Okay, and one last question is on inventory. Uh, if I look at in the PNL, the inventory is high at about 104 crores. Would not just you, but would the industry be staring at some inventory losses if the prices were to go down? So, uh, there is uh, the inventory level is high right now relative to what it usually is. Uh, if you see the PVC trend, actually it has started moving upward as demand is normalizing and supply continues to remain tight. Uh, there was a slight inventory loss in the June quarter of around uh, five odd crores. Um, but I don't see a, a major threat of inventory loss going forward simply because PVC will only tighten from here on. And versus making PVC compound ourselves, sourcing it from, let's say, Lubrizol, at least one player in the industry, the leader in CPVC is making their own compound. Uh, how much margins we forego when we source CPVC compound and then make CPVC pipes? So it is tough to quantify an exact margin firstly because this is not a commodity. Every uh, organization has their own sort of contracts with their suppliers and uh, a price is formed. It is not like PVC where there is a sort of, uh, you know, global benchmark pricing or something like that. So it's very, you know, it's, it is impossible to quantify the, the margin. And for us, you know, I've always stated that Prince was always perceived as a strong brand in the PVC space, also trying to sell CPVC products. So now with this tie-up, you know, we have that inherent first mover advantage and brand equity in PVC. And with Lubrizol, now we get that in CPVC as well, since uh, the FlowGuard Plus brand is still very strong in India. Uh, and, you know, whatever, uh, definitely our cost would be higher, but I think at the uh, operating margin level that would be set off as we uh, ramp up market share in a space where we are under penetrated. And last question on channel finance, what is the guidance and what is the exact amount absolute currently? So we are at around 54 crores in terms of the utilization so far and uh, we wanted to be slightly moderate over there because we are also moving as I said on my call, we are moving uh, to a partial recourse type of a structure. But slow but steady is what we are looking at. So it's around 54, 55 crores as on date. But as a percentage of sales, where do you want to keep it? So we don't want it to be, I think we should be in the range of around 15 to 20 percent around that range and not beyond that. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. 2000 crores of sales, 
and twenty yeah. percent of that is four hundred crores of sales. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I'll take that. It's around fifteen to twenty percent of our distributors are on channel finance, not as a uh, percentage of sale. This is not something that we can uh, have as you know uh, fix as a percentage of sale. It is basically we are very clear as a management that channel finance is something that we don't want to give to each and every distributor. There are a handful of distributors who have a strong uh, credit history and trust built with the company and only those distributors are on channel finance. This is not something that we are looking to uh, expand on aggressively. The simple point being the, the, that only we have moved from full recourse on our books to partial recourse. That is the only change. So to understand this correctly, the absolute number is what we should be tracking and which remains at 55 crores and broadly it should remain thereabouts and we should be focusing on absolute number. Correct. So it, yeah. it would be range bound. Uh, right. uh, yeah. Sure. sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marda from FIL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, I just wanted to ask on the, the new product launch, which uh, which all we're talking about, uh, who would be the key customers uh, for this product? And uh, how are the margins and the uh, receivable cycle? Uh, like, does it vary from our existing business or it will largely be the same? Sure. Thank you, Madhav. Uh, so this is still going to be uh, through the channel, but there is no trade as such where this there will be no retailers or anything uh, in this space. So, but we will not take any direct exposure. We will still sell through distributors. There are specialized distributors for this segment, industrial distributors, uh, where we already have a decent experience because uh, some of our PPR already is sold through the in industrial channel. And if I have to talk from an end user point of view, uh, it would be various industries like you know chemical, power generation, metal treatment, paper and pulp, um, water treatment. Um, so these are the you know potential end users that we are looking at, and the gross margins are uh, very favorable relative to our existing portfolio. And that's why I think it's a a, a very good complement to my existing portfolio today, uh, because of the the kind of value proposition that we are seeing in this space. So it may not be huge in terms of contribution to the top line, uh, but the Gross margin is, is going to be favorable. Got it. And the second question was um, last year the larger players benefited from you know market share gains from the smaller players. Are we seeing any of the smaller players coming back in the market or uh, the it remains status quo and sort of it's still feasible for the larger players to gain share in the coming year? Yeah, so that's an interesting question, Madhav, and it's something that we internally uh, try to evaluate and brainstorm on that. So if I see what has, you know, to, to answer that question, it's very important to understand what has caused that market share gain in the first place. Uh, in, it, it, it was a multitude of factors, whether it was the sort of cash crunch that the smaller players were facing, uh, the tightening of BIS norms, and now especially post-COVID, the kind of volatility that, uh, you know, the commodity of PVC has seen. Today, if I see globally, PVC continues to remain tight. Supply of PVC continues to remain a challenge. Uh, and as demand normalizes in the Indian market, I think PVC is going to see an uptrend. The extent of the uptrend is, is um, uh, you know, something that, that needs to be uh, understood. Uh, but to answer your question, I, I don't see the smaller players coming back anytime soon uh, because of this sort of environment. Understood. And just look for demand for the rest of the year, especially on like uh, the plumbing and the agri side. How are you all seeing the market uh, shaping up? So uh, agri now, I think we need to see how it will perform from you know November onwards because that will be the next season. On plumbing. Uh, I am optimistic about plumbing, uh, the kind of growth that the real real estate sector has been showing. I think there is still that underlying buoyancy um, for real estate demand. Whether it's in urban India or whether it's semi-urban rural India and the affordable housing. So I am still optimistic 
for plumbing and SWR, which is anyway 65, 70% of our overall business. And what about the Dalsigal Sugar? Uh, has that picked up in a good way and uh, is it favorable for a larger player like us to supply volume there or are the margins not great? Uh, so we want to sort of uh, limit the amount of volume we sell in the market. Madhav, could you repeat your question, please? Uh, no, the, the Nalsijal program, we were hearing that you know it's picked up in a good way in some of the states in the country. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, how you all seeing the, the takeoff uh, in the demand there and uh, is, is our company looking to sell meaningful volumes or because margins are lower, we might want to limit exposure to that business? So with government projects, you know, the key thing has always been credit uh, and the receivable cycle which I think has been uh, fairly disciplined. So we will continue to participate uh, because yes, at the gross margin level, it may not be favorable, but the volumes do help with cost absorption. Uh, in the December and March quarter, we did see a, a good contribution. Of course, in the current quarter, it was slightly subdued due to the lockdown. Uh, so I, we will continue to participate as long as the credit cycle is disciplined. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, I would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Chida from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, my question is, uh, on, you know, with the flow guard coming in the half year last year and now the industrial CPVC side, so over the next three to five years, uh, how should the CPVC share in our total business should rise? And what is the incremental gross margin in CPVC over our base business of PVC? So, uh, especially, the, you know, with the flow guard plus brand now, uh, it is very well aligned with our overall strategy of premiumization, which we began much before our tie-up with FlowGuard Plus as well. So I think now with this uh, tie-up and, and, you know, with industrial CPUC, it may not be a huge contributor in terms of top line, um, but I think it will help us improve the overall market potential for CPVC over the next five to 10 years. Uh, I think we need to target double digit growth in CPVC every year. It's hard to comment on how, what that will be as a percentage of the overall revenue. But I am pretty optimistic about strong growth in CPVC uh, from here on. Uh, on the incremental gross margin there? Uh, you know, I, I cannot comment on uh, segmental margins, but CPVC is a value added product for us. And focusing on CPVC uh, will improve our product mix which has been a lever for margin expansion and will continue to be a lever for margin expansion. Okay. My second question is, uh, uh, there has been a lot of volatility in your margin, uh, what we saw in the last three, four quarters now. Uh, what would be your best guess uh, incrementally uh, on the margin profile, either percentage or EBITDA per kg, whatever you are comfortable with, uh, over the next 12, 12 months and what kind of volume growth at the company level uh, uh, is what you see? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, firstly if I see last year, of course the, the margins were strong because of multiple reasons like uh, you know improving pricing power, uh, better product mix and inventory gain. Uh, all three led to a increase in margin in the past financial year. Of course, this last quarter, the margins have, uh, you know, reduced uh, because of a small inventory loss. Uh, even the sales was, was fairly muted. So, you know, we did not have the usual cost absorption benefits as well. Um, so, you know, there are enough and more levers for margin expansion. Uh, you know, what we have been consistently talking about, whether it's pricing power, value added product mix, uh, which will only improve with such new launches. Uh, like the industrial CPVC uh, and operating leverage would be our third lever for margin expansion. So we need to keep working on these three um, uh, segments and uh, that will lead to, uh, you know, strong margins uh, going forward. 
I'm and I'm sorry, I'll, I missed the last part of your question. Uh, volume growth expectation. So volume growth, I think uh, again, we are very confident that the real estate segment is underlyingly buoyant. Um, we are also going to be making market share gains, whether it's due to from the unorganized segment or from other organized players because of the kind of network expansion we've been working on, because of the kind of branding uh, investments that we've made. Uh, so whatever the industry growth is, you know, over the past few years, we have been able to outpace industry growth by two to 4%. Um, and I am uh, confident about that continuing over the next, uh, you know, few quarters. Uh, Mr. Clarification, your margin answer, the reference there for expansion, is it the expanded margin of 17% which you reported in 21 and there is a expansion case by virtue of mix operating leverage, etc. Or your reference is something else? No, I'm referring to FY21 margin uh, where there was the pricing power product mix and uh, inventory gain. So that is talking about FY21 on an annual basis, the EBITDA margin. And you are, your reference is there is an expansion scope over that 17%? No, I'm saying that has expanded to 17% because of these levers and we mm -hmm. need to continue working on these levers going forward. Okay. Thank you very much, Nia. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Lodaya from ValueQuest. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. So just one clarification on margin. So first, how you look at your margins internally? Is it more EBITDA per kg basis or it is percentage of sales basis? How you internally evaluate this? So we internally evaluate on uh, percentage and per ton basis. Uh, but in terms of dis discussing it with external stakeholders or any projections, uh, we would stick to a range uh, in percentage terms. Okay. And uh, and just a clarification one more. So FY21, you did 17 margin. So whatever you have stated, you are saying that FY22 and beyond that, margins will be at least 17.5 or more. Is that understanding correct? No, that, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying that there were multiple reasons for margin expansion, whether it was pricing power, product mix, or inventory gain, and better cost absorption because of the kind of growth we had. Okay. And I'm simply saying we need to continue working on those levers the way we have. Right. So, but in terms of range, if you can help us, what kind of range we should consider for annual margins going ahead? So if it's hard to give guidances and we've always been conservative as a company, uh, I understand what you're trying to get at. So I think 13 to 15% is something that we have already always guided at and I would like to stick to that. And then we are happy to, to keep working and, and trying to exceed. Uh, you know, we are not happy with 13 to 15 and we want to always you know, strive to improve whether it's on the top line or on the bottom line. Yeah. In terms of annual volume, uh, uh, so that we'll at least do whatever volumes you would have done last year. Is that uh, base assumption correct? I think, uh, do I think it is possible? Yes. So do we want to? Obviously, yes. Um, so we need to keep working on, I think, you know, rather than speculating on what the annual number would be, I think we need to put our head down and focus on you know network expansion invest in branding um, trying to create a further pull uh, for our products across that and you know that whatever results are going to be is going to be a result of of that uh, process so of course the there is is it possible it is very much possible so what would be for the team? I'm unable to hear you. Sir, uh, Q4, uh, your uh, employee cost for the quarter was around 27 crore. And in this quarter, it is at around 21 crore. So what has led to decline in employee cost on a QOQ basis? And how we should look at this number going ahead? So I think employee cost will remain, um, 
you know uniform i think in in the last quarter there are usually some incentives that is there for the team based on a, a strong performance uh, there has been no layoff or no uh, salary cut or anything um, this is just something that will it's usually there um linked to the performance in the march quarter and i think this this is nothing uh, uh as a cause of concern for layout or uh, salary cut or anything okay thank you and all the best thank you chirag thank you the next question is from the line of dhawal shah from giri capital please go ahead yeah hello yes sir you may go ahead yeah uh sir uh, how is the uh, demand scenario uh, after the second lockdown uh, what sort of year over year growth are you seeing currently so uh, i think we are moving in the right direction june was better than may and july has been much better than june uh, and the few reasons for that is channel inventory um, was very low by the end of the quarter and we have just started seeing an increase in the pvc pricing uh, okay that is at the channel level and at the end user level i think as the guidelines ease uh, you know the demand has started to normalize um, you know real estate is showing that kind of positive momentum uh, so we are confident of returning to a strong growth momentum going forward and uh, typically when the when the prices are rising uh, generally the channel inventory uh, so the distributor network would tend to stock up more correct okay okay and uh, so uh, 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 would you be confident of achieving at least a, sing- a high single digit kind of volume growth over fy21 base looking at the scenario currently so you know i am optimistic about the demand scenario mm. um is it possible yes but you know i don't like to speculate on these numbers i think like i said earlier as well we just need to focus on network expansion branding creating a pull for our products and uh, you know then the results will take care of itself so we need to focus on the process and then the 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 delivery will happen uh, and i think the environment is definitely uh improving from a demand point of view got it sir if we adjust the ebitda margin for the inventory loss so it would be around 14 and a half percent for the current quarter uh, for the q1 yeah 40 not percent 14 not percent okay uh, so then inventory loss was the only uh, one of uh, expense uh, and then then some the operating deal leverage which you had because of the uh, lower volumes yeah okay okay and uh, are you back uh, so in, in the fourth quarter we had uh, a higher advertisement expenditure one time uh, so on a run rate basis now uh, uh, from the second quarter since things are normalizing again uh, what sort of spends would you be doing so i think uh, 2 to 3% is is what we have always done and um, okay. that is something that as demand normalizes we would like to uh, continue okay and so to the last question again on the advertising now uh, the the way of advertising uh, uh, like the the, pe- the piping industry had adopted different ways of advertising but now after uh, covid as many people have shifted to digital uh, so what is the piping industry and your company in particular uh, uh, adopting are we again going back to those more uh, uh, you know non digital ways or 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 are we more digital or or what is it yeah that's a good question uh definitely the focus on digital for prints has been increasing i would say that has been uh, a shift even before covid that was happening but after covid it's happening in an expedited way uh the way we are using uh, you know the digital landscape um to to reach to our influencers and our end users to create that sort of brand equity and brand perception i think the traditional medium still have some power whether it is to do with retail boards or you know 
plumber meets and workshops um our loyalty program uh, udan uh, is strengthening from here on and helping us improve our touch points um and the digital play uh, you know play helps us across urban and rural so that focus will definitely keep improving so sir uh, sorry to interrupt but when you say digital uh, your end customer uh, uh sir i would request you to rejoin the it's a continuing question it's not a new question uh, so is it uh, are they able to connect with it because or is it only through the phone or it's through some other medium so i think it's uh, multiple medium uh, one is uh, definitely social media um, has a is a key way and this is not like a transactional right so there no one is going to come online to buy a pipe or fitting it is more to create a certain level of awareness and and brand power um, and today the the key influencers are retailers and plumbers in some cases in rural india it could also be the individual uh, homeowners uh, so we have to target across these segments thank you Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, first is, I uh, just wanted to understand uh, uh, in the marketplace how we are going about pricing, specifically on the CPVC side. Uh, given PVC prices have moved up, now I understand from the larger distributors that Lubrizol has been seeking a price increase. And uh, speaking with the channel partners again, what we understand is our pricing has been at discount to peers like Astral. Uh, now, in a in a in a hypothetical scenario, if Lubrizol does seek a further increase of 10-15 percent, uh, what would it mean on our strategy on market share versus spreads? And that that's the first question. sure thank you ritesh uh, so firstly the cpvc price hike if uh, you know are going to be industry wide it is not going to be only from one particular supplier whether it is lubrizol so cpvc right now i think pricing is definitely one and i think across the three major global suppliers there have been uh, price hikes that have happened over the past few quarters uh and that you know could maybe continue but i think the main point here is about supply today if you see you know we were talking about a few quarters ago smaller players were struggling to to get uh access after the anti dumping duty access to raw material today larger players are also un- unable to uh you know get uh, supply of raw material so today they do not have the supply security uh in the marketplace so price is only going to be on paper unless you are actually going to be able to sell uh so today not only the smaller players but larger players also are running here and there for uh, product whereas today we are in absolutely strong position as far as supply security is concerned um and any price hikes uh, you know will be industry wide it is not you know something that is going to be unique uh, to one supplier uh, or 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 one partner because the dynamics at the end of the day are same here uh, given the peer set has captive compounding i think uh, we also used to do captive compounding earlier so you would appreciate that they have a benefit on the cost side so even if it's an industry wide increase uh, obviously the increase what we will have given we are procuring a compound from lubrizol uh, our costing will be higher uh, and that one has to look at or appreciate in conjunction with the discount at which still we are selling it to the peer set Uh, so does it still mean uh, market share loss or are we looking at spread contraction going forward so ritesh let me repeat uh, maybe in a different way that yes we are at a premium in terms of our cost but that delta i don't think has moved significantly because when we signed up with lubrizol a year ago there were still these other players who were buying you know resin and making it indigenously and that holds to tr- true today as well so i don't think that delta in our cost has moved significantly cost has increased for everyone in a proportionate manner simply because it is a change in the industry dynamic which has led to these increase in cost it's not something that is specific uh, to one supplier or or one particular vendor 
so i think what the dynamic was uh, you know a year ago when we did the partnership it's a pretty similar dynamic the delta in terms of the finished good pricing has reduced to the market leaders uh, i'm sure you would appreciate that we have not been a first mover in this space which is why we would have we had to sell at a discount but that delta has significantly reduced on the finished good side which has helped us find the balance between market share and uh, selling profitably thank you the next question is from the line of achal from uh, gm financial please go ahead yeah hi good afternoon thank you for the opportunity so my first question uh, you know with respect to inventory i think q o q we have seen a significant increase in the inventory so the question is is it uh, to do with the raw material or is it to do with the finished goods it's a split of both uh, achal um, and as the demand uh, normalizes the uh, finished good inventory uh, would normalize uh, so it's 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 been an increase both in raw material and finished good inventory Understood. And uh, you know, with respect to first quarter, so what is usually the agri mix, and what was it in this quarter? Would you be able to give some color on that? Even I mean, we have seen a substantial drop in volumes. Yeah. Um, so if you could help with that. Sure. So agri being muted has not been the only reason uh, for the drop in volumes, but it has been one of the key reasons. Usually, for us in quarter one, agri would be uh, you know. around 38 to 40% uh, which in this quarter has uh, been around 30% right right and uh, you know with respect to this uh, you know supply security perspective for the pvc a uh, what is driven this uh, you know i i uh, you know we were hearing that some of the facilities in us and you know were restarting uh, about a quarter back so what is it that is driving this uh, uh, you know availability part of it and uh, how do you see it evolving actually when you say the prices are bound to remain kind of for more go up from here on so uh, actual supply security today is a challenge both in pvc and cpvc is the point i was making specifically coming to pvc i think it's multiple uh, factors uh, like you correctly said yes there was a delay in supplies globally um, uh, and that is not, you know even as that has improved that has not impacted the indian pvc pricing for two reasons in my mind one is out west whether it's north america europe latin america inherent demand has been very very robust for pvc so they are choosing to sell locally um, and not export as much and freight costs globally have you know i'm sure you would be aware have gone up uh in multiple uh which has kept this uh rising buoyant understood and uh, if you could give some colors uh, in terms of the uh you know the b2b part you know uh, post the tie up uh have we started realizing that benefit uh, is it there in the uh, quarter numbers or we are yet to see any meaningful contribution as yet so right now i think b2b we are more i would say trying to uh, we are sowing the seeds right now uh, so we are in that process as we are building the team building the relations with the key uh, stakeholders in that segment so i think it would uh, take a few quarters for that to realize but the process is going on currently understood and uh, just one more uh, you know if you could give some color on the uh water tanks and the walls where are we how are we looking at and what kind of uh, i know it it may be a little early to ask but what kind of uh, contribution can we look at from these uh, two pieces you know in the let's say next 3 to 5 years can it be like 5% 15% or could be less than 5% some range so tanks uh is you know something that you know we it was a natural extension to our product portfolio but i don't think it's going to be a major driver uh, for growth um it's still early days so hard to 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 comment on um, how it would be as a percentage of the overall revenue but one needs to be uh, sort of conservative uh, simply because it's early days and we're trying to establish our uh, selves uh, the feedback on the product and quality continues to remain 
um, encouraging and, and we are looking to, to further penetrate in this space and cross sell our tanks with our pipes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sneha Talreja from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Thanks, thanks a lot for the opportunity. I actually just wanted to understand about your new product. So actually in your commentary remarks, you also said that some part of uh, sales is already happening for PPR. Could you tell me what sort of a sales is happening for PPR? What would be the percentage and what would be the readily available uh, channel for us in that case? And secondly, which are the players currently which are supplying in this market, whether it be domestic or any global player or any uh, import, uh, that will be helpful. Sure. So uh, PPR in the industrial, uh, we have a, a decent uh, distribution uh, network. Uh, PPR also in India still is largely for plumbing in certain pockets. So industrial is, is still not uh, that developed. We are still relying on traditional products, I think plastics, uh, plastic pipes are still being penetrated, uh, have some further room to be penetrated in the uh, industrial space. And today in India, if I look at the CPVC industrial space, uh, there is only uh, maybe one player in India and there is not much, it, it's not easy to, to import simply because of the uh, freight costs. So uh, I am seeing a very good adoption curve that we can drive in this space simply by looking at what is happening globally um, and, and the kind of challenges that there are with the conventional MS pipes today. Um, I think there is a very good scope for this product. So just an ex extension to this, you said that, you know, globally we generally, uh, India generally follows global trends. Like we followed in case of DWC and, you know, you came in 2017, now we are following this. Which are other uh, segments which can be, you know, part of uh, our growth journey, maybe going ahead or even for the industry? Uh, Sifshad, you can highlight some of the global trends which you are seeing and which we or, you know, any other peers could later follow in terms of getting the demand. Yeah, so I think you're uh, right in saying that we have been late in the adoption curve and, you know, it has to be leaders like ourselves who have to drive this change in the industry. Um, and that started with DWC and now with uh, industrial CPVC uh, Corzen. Um, now the focus has to be on nurturing this product for the next few quarters and only then would we like to, you know, come into a newer product and I think let the action speak louder than words and, you know, when we come into that product, we will talk about the potential and uh, try to be a first mover in many more segments from here on. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devang Patel from NAFA Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Hi, my questions are on industrial CPVC pipes again. So globally, what is the penetration of these pipes versus MS pipes? How old is the technology? And in India, over five years, what kind of penetration would you expect in the 16,000 crore market? Yeah, those are, those are all good questions and, uh, you know, sort of hard for me to answer at this point. All I can say is today in India, uh, CPVC, more than I think 90% or 95% of CPVC uh, in my understanding is used only for domestic application uh, and it is very skewed towards domestic plumbing whereas globally, uh, you know, industrial and domestic both form a pretty good part of the overall CPVC consumption. So simply by looking at that, I think now it's just a point of concept selling in India. Uh, which is not easy. It is going to have its gestation period. Uh, but we are willing to do that because, uh, you know, the, the harder it is, the higher the entry, um, uh, you know, barriers to entry in the segment. And, uh, you know, if we are, uh, you know, I'm fairly confident simply because the product is so much superior to the conventional solution. So if we are able to do that concept selling, uh, you know, nothing stops us from having high double digit growth for industrial CPVC from here on. Uh, again, I don't, it may not be a very significant part in terms of contribution to the top line, but it is going to be extremely value added at the gross margin level. Uh, are the BIS uh, certification norms established in India for these kind of pipes and has anyone uh, before this tried to introduce them? So like I said, there is, uh, you know, one other uh, player in India, but largely still this space is dominated by uh, mild steel pipes. 
um, and you know the Corzan product of Lubrizol is is beyond you know any standards and specifications. I think Lubrizol's own standards of quality and safety are are much higher than uh, you know any standard. Then this is a product which has been very well accepted um, by consultants, uh, industrial consultants. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from Edelweiss Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so my question is just a clarification. As you had already mentioned that channel inventory is down and uh, your uh, inventory level has normalized. So it's a fair to assume your inventory went back to the fourth quarter level? So inventory is not yet normalized, but as demand picks up, it will normalize uh, in the coming time. Mm-hmm. Okay. The second question is, uh, as I can see, that the sequential volume degrowth uh, in prints is relatively as compared of peers, uh, whoever has given their numbers, and as well as your EBITDA per ton is also more, uh, you know, seen correction on sequential basis. Uh, so, can you give uh, some, uh, you know, enlighten me to differentiate these numbers? Sure. So I think in our industry, firstly, uh, you know, I understand why you're looking at QOQ and maybe not YOY because the YOY base also was impacted by COVID. But in our industry, I think uh, QOQ is, is never the right uh, comparison, especially March quarter to June quarter, simply because the dynamics are so much different for agri uh, and for plumbing as well, because quarter four is a, is a quarter where uh, you know, all the distributors are gunning for their targets and, uh, you know, so that they can achieve their um, incentives. Uh, like I said, the, there were three main reasons for the volume degrowth for us. Two were industry-wide. One was, uh, you know, the muted agri demand and second was the lockdown having an impact. And one specific to Prince was the channel inventory being very, very high. Uh, at the end of the March quarter, which was a strategic decision we took. And we had said that in the last uh, conference call as well, that, you know, we, we, uh, that was one of the learnings that we had from the last lockdown. We wanted to have no supply chain issues and have plenty of product available in the market. And which is why we were outperformers in the March uh, quarter. That would have been seamless, uh, but because of this, uh, you know, muted demand, it has led to a, a sharper drop. Uh, but we have moved in the right direction. Uh, June was much better than May, and July has been, uh, you know, we have returned to our growth trajectory. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for taking my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, if I may, I just wanted to uh, continue with my prior question. Uh, Nihar, what you indicated is that our discount versus the market leader has reduced. Uh, is it possible to quantify it? I'm just trying to understand what our strategy is in the marketplace. Yeah, so I think if you look at a few years ago, it was you know high single digit uh, or in some cases even a double digit discount to the industry leaders which now, uh, you know, in some markets uh, would be around 3 to 4%. In some markets, uh, it would be at a parity as well. Uh, so that has sharply reduced. And we have been able to grow over FY21, uh, over the four quarters of FY21. So we have to, it's, it's uh, a balance between market share and profitability, and we have to keep monitoring that. Okay, so on CPVC, basically our cost curve is a bit higher, but we are still at a bit of discount, and the discount has reduced over time, right? Would that be a fair conclusion? Yes. Okay, uh, that's helpful. Uh, my second question is on the PVC side. Uh, you indicated that we are not worried about inventory losses. I think uh, this question is for uh, most of the polymer processors in the country. Uh, I dig down certain data wherein I understand for April, May, and June, uh, the cumulative resin imports what we had was around 25, 27,000 tons, and the average pricing was around 125, 128. Now, if one looks at the Reliance current pricing, it is around, it's below 120 bucks, including volume discount. So I have a two-fold question over here. Why uh, is that we have moved to imports? Uh, do we not have a MOU with uh, Reliance to procure material locally? Uh, that's one. And secondly, looking at the average inventory cost, what we have, uh, wouldn't it mean that we are looking at inventory losses? Now, this is not something to print. Uh, we have been asking this question to 
uh, across companies as well, just trying to understand what the sourcing strategy is and the quantum of inventory losses that one can look into the next quarter. Yeah, that's a good question. So firstly, in terms of supply security, we have domestic contracts with the, both the large PVC manufacturers in the country. So one of the largest PVC processes in the country, uh, we do have those dependencies both on import and domestic. Um, and supply continued to remain a, a challenge, which is why we had a good amount of imports like most of the large processors would have. And if there was no you know, second wave, I think we would be in a very strong position. There will not be major inventory losses going forward because PVC has started going back in an uptrend. And we have both local and import which helps us control our cost quarter to quarter while still having strong supply security. Similarly, like CPVC, in PVC today, there are few players, both small and large, uh, who, who have supply chain issues. And uh, we do feel that we have the uh, pricing power, uh, being one of the strongest brands in PVC, uh, to, to return to our uh, you know, sort of regular margin level. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for the opportunity and congratulations for the OneFit Corzin launch. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, firstly, on the demand sustainability side, right? I mean, there's there have been so many questions largely on how is the demand shaping up for building materials in India and you know, especially for pipes. I'm just trying to understand, uh, could you help us uh, you know, with some lead indicators which you track internally, uh, maybe which builds on the conviction that the demand is going to be sustainable, uh, both from housing or project demand or even from government. Uh, and that could be across plumbing as WR or, you know, even agri pipe for that matter. So I'm just looking for some more color. Uh, any, any dealer feedback you could share, uh, which you get from your channel, essentially highlighting, okay, you know, this is what is moving faster than the other. And, uh, you know, overall, the next 12 months, you know, look like that. Uh, that's my first question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ram. Uh, so, yes, we, uh, you know, whatever uh, distributors that I've been talking to or markets that I have visited, uh, even at the retail level, uh, there has been a return in normalcy. Uh, so, you know, even if you look at larger picture data, the kind of performance, the real the real estate sector has been seeing in terms of registrations, especially in metros, um, has improved. And you know, whatever few developers also that uh, you know work with us, uh, there has been an underlying uh, buoyancy in demand. And I think it was, of course, impacted by the the second wave. But I think that still remains, and and that will come to the front and center now as as the economy uh, normalizes. And I think the the kind of direction that our performance has seen month on month, uh, you know, like we said that June was better than May and July has been much better than June. Uh, so that itself is the lead indicator that uh, demand is going to improve from here on and that direction has already started moving. Uh, also, channel inventory was very low at the end of the quarter. And with the increase in um, the PVC prices starting, I think that will uh, you know, be a further boost for, for the demand. So if I understand it correctly, basically we have to look demand more in short term, right? As, as in month on month behavior basically helps us build more conviction. There is no way out. Uh, could we build like a 12 month view on, on sustainability? Is it, is it even possible? So, I mean, it, I, the, the accuracy could not be that high for a 12-month view, especially in the current sort of uncertain economy. But if you're asking me for a medium-term view, I'm, I'm still optimistic uh, because real estate had started to see that turnaround um, in the December quarter and then in the March quarter. Um, and I think this was just a blip. I think that underlying uh, buoyancy will continue. Uh, to deliver. If you're asking for my opinion on a 12-month basis, uh, I'm optimistic. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities Limited for closing comments. Yeah, hi, thank you everyone for joining in this call and thank you uh, to the management for uh, taking all the uh, questions. I would now hand I would not want to hand over to Parag sir for his uh, closing comments if any. After that you can conclude the call. Thank you Rajesh. Thank you to all the participants. Stay safe. Thank you. On behalf of HDFC Securities Limited that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.